Thanks be to God in the He will strengthen you to the end. That's Paul's words to the church at Corinth. But he tells them this as they anticipate, as they wait. He says, as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, I would <coughs> to you that we are still waiting for the revealing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today is the first Sunday in Advent, and many who profess to be Christians have, have not only skipped past this idea of expectancy, but many have just left Jesus out of their lives altogether. And that's, that's what we get today, isn't it? Black Friday lasted, well, Black Friday's still going on, folks. Right? But what is it about? We, we just skip over Christ all together. And I'd say that most of society, if there wasn't something in it for them, we would skip over Christmas all together. I think most of our society has lost hope in Christ and instead has placed hope in things or hope in their own actions rather than in Christ. And so I ask you, what gives you the greatest hope? What gives you the hope for a future? What gives you that little glimmer of light in the darkness that is this world today? <laughs> I know if you are like me, we have, all of us, experienced some dark times in our life, right? Maybe you're experiencing one of those times even now. What is it that gets you through those? What, what gives you hope to be able to make it through those situations? I know there was a time in my life where it seemed like there was no hope. In fact, there have been several times in my life where it seemed like there was no hope. No hope to get out of a situation or, or no hope that there would even be a future. And most of the time that I had experienced those, those difficult times in my life, I tried to go it alone. Have you been there? Have you tried to go it alone? Have you tried to just plow through it just to get through it? <clears throat> and sometimes even that little glimmer of hope is put out, isn't it? You take a step forward and you get knocked back to. What gives you hope in the midst of that? For me, I try to rely on myself. Trying to plow through things until there came a point where I had nothing. I couldn't even rely on myself, you see. And it was only then that I came to realize that my hope wasn't in what I could do or, or just getting through this. My hope was in a God who was always with me. Friends, we need to recapture the idea that our hope is in God and not in ourselves. Friends, the season of Advent is this time of expectation, but it, it, it's a time of hope. <coughs> the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Corinthian church, he, he encouraged them. He encourages us to, to wait expectantly for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. As the culture around us begins its, its, its holiday madness, Christ invites us into this place, into his place. He calls his people to gather together. 
to celebrate, but also to support one another in the, expect in the expectancy that he will come again. He invites us to experience his, his creation now and, and to look toward the future. How many folks have you talked to when they're overwhelmed with darkness and they see no future? Friends, if you can't see a future, you have no hope. And I would put out to you that if we slow down enough, if we stop trying to plow through it and to do it on our own, then we'll come to realize that our home, our future, rests in Christ. We must remember that Christ is coming both as a, a child in the manger and as Lord of Lords. And when we look past the Christmas trees and the presents and all these gifts and we, we focus on Christ, these weeks of Advent, they're going to be a blessing to us. They're going to be a blessing of hope. Rather than just something that we go through that exhausts us. How many of you, by the time you get to January 1, are just exhausted with Christmas? Why is that? It's because rather than waiting expectantly, we're doing expectantly. Isn't that true? We put all of this effort into doing things rather than waiting and listening expectantly. Friends, our hope is not what we do. Our hope is who we are as children of God. <laughs> the season of Advent is a season of hope. It, it, it proclaims the coming of Christ. <coughs> The season proclaims that the child will be born in Bethlehem and that, in fact, he lives in us now and we are expectantly awaiting his final victory when he comes again. Christ comes to you every day, friends. Christ is born in you every day and you are born in Christ every day. That's where our hope is. In this Advent season, our, our, our culture generally tells us to, to look backwards rather than to look forward. Our, and usually our culture tells us to look at now rather than to look toward a future. But friends, our hope is not in the past and our hope is not in the now. Our hope is in a future because we know that it's in the future that Christ will return. Christ will come again to us. And let me tell you, when you turn your gaze toward the future, you can't help but see a light. So no matter what you're going through, no matter where you've been, friend, you can look to the future expectantly. And let me tell you, the more that you do that, the brighter the light will be. And before you know it, the darkness, the clouds that are over you are going to start to part. And sooner rather than later, you're going to find yourself in the presence. The prophet Jeremiah recognized the hope in the Messiah. He wrote, in those days and at that time I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David. And he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. Hope 
comes in justice and righteousness. Those are not words that we hear today. We hear about the injustice a whole lot. Just turn on the news, right? We hear about all the horrible and the terrible things that are occurring in our world today. And rather than righteousness, we hear about radicalism. The Messiah will come to execute justice and righteousness in the land. Friends, to me, that's where our hope lies. It hopes, uh, our, our, our hope lies in expectantly awaiting the Messiah. Friends, we are preparing for that event in the stable. That brings together the hopes and the fears of all of the years. But in this hope, it demands great energy and it, great, it, it, it demands great faith for us. As we begin this worship year, we're called to remember that on the horizon is the dawn of a new day. On the horizon is new life in the reign of God. Advent is about looking afresh at the pictures of our lives and seeing how God has been at work in us. The waiting of Advent is about sitting at the table and sharing with others stories as we've experienced the love of God. Advent's about planting seeds of expectation in our younger generations. Advent is about uh, expecting the greatest of all gifts, the Messiah, the Holy One, Emmanuel, God with us. We sing about this, don't we? And by God, we are all called to remember. By God, we're called to share that message. And by God, we are to plant for the future. For the future is bright. If we'll only look there. Because that's where our hope lies, friends. We seek to live faithfully in the now. Looking expectantly toward the future. And we long to see that one. That one that was born in a manger. The one that was born to, to save us, friends. To save us not only from this broken world, but in fact to save us from ourselves. Friends, where does your hope lie? Does your hope lie in what you do? Or does your hope lie in the future coming of Christ? Where's your faith? Where's your hope? My hope and prayer is that during this Advent time, we'll slow our lives down a little so that we can see that there is hope and it comes to us as the very gift of God if we'll but receive it. Let's pray today. God, we come before you, Lord. We give you thanks, Lord, for all that you provide for us each and every day. Lord God, you invite us to, to share in the hope that is your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, help us. Help us to put aside ourselves so that we can see your light. We pray this in Christ's holy name. Amen.